Hi, my name is Eliud Uresti. I'm studying for my master's in political science. Um, I'm originally from McAllen, Texas, a small little town on the border of Texas and Mexico. Um, and I completed my undergrad there at uh, Texas State, which is about 30 minutes south of Austin in a town called San Marcos. Um, and that's originally where I heard about um, AmeriCorps, which is what led me to beginning this program at the Stevenson Center. Um, anytime I've been in school or even had regular employment, I always like to either have a, a second um, a second job or just find some way to occupy the rest of my time outside of work or school. Um, and so while I was in my undergrad in San Marcos, I started volunteering at a, a, a local Hispanic community cultural center um, and the woman I worked with, a, a teacher from the, the local elementary school there, um, kind of put me onto what AmeriCorps was and and she thought I would be a good candidate for it and and so I just started doing some, some research on my own <clears throat> um, and then actually kind of very a very fortunate experience was that one day I just went to get um, food at the at the lunch hall on campus um, and there was a flyer um, for an AmeriCorps position um, actually near my hometown um, and it was getting close to graduation and I didn't know what I was going to do and I was broke um, and I figured it would be a good time to move back here with my parents, save some money um, and go visit home for a little while. Um, so I ended up uh, applying for the position which was actually um, a college advisor at a local high school. Um, so what I would do was um, help uh, not only students, but their families, um, their siblings, um, kind of deal with the whole college transition for, for uh, juniors and seniors in high school. I would work with um, the freshmen and sophomore as well, um, but that was more so just uh, college awareness and, and kind of helping them stay on the right track as far as developing their resume and, and participating in volunteer and extracurricular activities um, in preparation to, to be a, an eligible candidate for the school of their choice in the future. Um, but like I said, I did mostly work with, with seniors and juniors and, and that was mostly um, as far as for the juniors was uh, preparing them for SAT or ACT exams. Um, they could come in and, and you know work in the computer lab on on practice exams or, or just get to know a little bit more about the formatting and the setup of the test. Um, and then for seniors, um, it was a lot about obviously um, either retaking those exams if they weren't pleased with their first score or um, already just applying to the schools that they wanted. And, and then the most important part for, for a lot of these kids was uh, um, kind of financial aid counseling. Um, most of these kids came from uh, a family that either had nobody in college or nobody gone to college before or um, a very kind of blue collar, low income type background. Um, so they had to navigate most of the college uh, entrance experience for themselves. They didn't have a lot of guidance or a lot of um, kind of how to's from their parents. Um, because they were the first ones to do so to try and actually go to college um, <clears throat> It was it was kind of um, challenging because Not everybody wants to go to college and not everybody needs to go to college um, so I had a lot of times where I kind of had to Put myself on the leash so to speak and, and kind of back down from those who you know, I couldn't force anybody to apply to college. I couldn't force anybody to take the SATs. Um, but what I tried to do then was just kind of uh, push push back a little bit in a sense. And, and I would I would sit down with students one-on-one -on -one and, and if they, you know, had told me, hey, I'm not going to college, like, I don't need to do this, I don't need to do that. I, I accepted their decision, uh, but I would, I would always ask them to kind of tell me, you know, well, what is your plan? What are you going to do? How are you going to make money? Where are you going to live? All these things. Um, so that I, in that sense, I'm still, I'm not forcing them to apply or I'm not forcing them to take the test or anything, but they kind of, they could see it in a different light. Well, what am I going to do? And, and then for some of them, it actually ended up working and, 
and they decided for themselves that they would go to maybe just a community college or a vocational school. Um, but for those that even didn't, at least I thought it, it shed some light on, on perspective of of what really needs to be done, whether you go to school or not, <clears throat> you know, you got to pay your bills somehow. But um, yeah, and it was it was a good experience um, for my first term. And I liked AmeriCorps so much that I came back for a second term um, again in education. Um, I was welcomed back at the school where I had um, served my first term. I had a really good relationship with the counselors and and uh, the teachers there and, and the students. Um, but I, I felt that I would get more out of a, an AmeriCorps experience in a different location and in a different um, a different environment. So, like I said, I did I stayed in education, um, but I went to the other end of the spectrum, and I moved to Austin and uh, taught kinder first and second grade or tutored kinder first and second graders um, in reading um, and that was that was interesting as well just because it was so different from 17 18 year old kids i went down to you know five six and seven year olds and <clears throat> it was almost as equally challenging just in, in different ways um, but it, it, it also kind of it allowed me to see how some high school students who were quote unquote difficult or you know not the uh, the most responsive it, it allowed me to see how a lot of those cases start very very early on in, in childhood um like at the elementary school level where i was working um but even more than that it wasn't it wasn't just about the academics it was that a lot of these issues that the kids were having in class whether it be you know just um, conduct or or um, the inability to keep up with the schoolwork it wasn't it wasn't anything to it wasn't anything based on their intellectual capacity most of the time it was it was just other aspects very very um, core and, and primal developmental as aspects that that kids need and that a lot of these kids always didn't have addressed at home and so naturally if if a, if a five-year-old all kids, I mean, all kids want to learn. All kids like to have fun and they like to be engaged. And it's very easy to get kids to do that. However, it's, they need a lot of attention. And one teacher with a classroom full of 25 or 30 students is obviously not going to be able to give the kid, every kid, the attention that they need as far as those developmental aspects, nor should they. Teachers are there to, to teach and to a certain level you know, help the students grow. Um, but that always, you know, is something that, that starts in the home or at least should start in the home. Um, so for a lot of these kids, that was the issue is, you know, as much as they want to learn or as much as they want to be engaged, if they're not being adequately engaged or challenged or even just paid attention to at home, um, then that's going to come out in school. And so that's where discipline problems come in and kind of maybe apathy on some of these students or rebelliousness will come out. Um, so it, it really showed me how how much everything is tied together um, as far as um, discipline and behavior issues in school. And then, you know, eventually as you grow up, you know, like in high school, how um, some students might deal with with troubles outside of school and that affects them in school. Um, and so like that was the case for most of these students was they weren't getting the necessary attention at home. Um, so then they would they would kind of try and compensate for it in the classroom um, in other ways other than just learning. Um, so it just it made me realize how how education really starts um, outside of the classroom. A lot of these kids could it's not that they couldn't read. It's that they didn't have glasses because they couldn't afford them. So they couldn't see from the back of the classroom or a lot of these kids, you know, didn't get to play enough at home because uh, both parents were at work and they had to stay inside for hours on end instead of going outside and playing with their friends. And so the, the during school, the school hours was when they, they had that that outlet where they could play with their friends. And so they wouldn't focus as well. Um, and that just got me a little more passionate about education and, and how I see how education can be the tool um, for a lot of people to to improve their 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 own well being, whether that be financially, you know, economically, or just just learning and, and being able to to do what they want to pursue their passion. But 
it starts way well before um, the classroom. Um, and, you know, in turn, education can help their life outside of the classroom and the life outside of the classroom needs to be good in order to um, appropriately, you know, have a chance at education. Um, and so then, yeah, after that, I kind of, uh, I was in the same situation <clears throat> as I was in undergrad. I, uh, I was about to finish uh, this gig, this second Amer AmeriCorps term gig, and I had no idea what I was going to do again. And so um, we actually had a training that was really helpful. Um, it, was, it was pretty basic, like such as, or as, as far as like resume development and, and uh, networking and stuff, which are things that I already knew about. But <clears throat> um, our, our program coordinator um, put us onto the AmeriCorps alum website. Um, specifically the Austin AmeriCorps alum website um, and they just had so many resources on their like webinars and you know grad school uh, virtual fairs online fairs um, and they had a, they actually had a list of all the partner schools um, that would either match funds or provide you know an additional stipend for AmeriCorps alum um, for grad school um, but frankly Illinois State was the only one that covered all of it and I thought that was pretty um, pretty awesome of them and I figured if they were willing to do that for their students and they must be very committed to to the mission you know the Stevenson Center and, and community and economic development um, so the more I looked into the program the more I, I, I felt it was just it was the right fit for me um, it, it fell right into line with what I had been doing in both my AmeriCorps terms um, and my volunteer experience at the Cultural Center before that um, and yeah, and it was it was an opportunity to uh, um, not only study, you know, political science um, or any of the other majors that are offered, but it was it was a great opportunity to be surrounded around people who not maybe perhaps not necessarily had the same opinions as me, but other people who I know would at least be in the same realm of what it is that they want to do. Um, you know, for their community and for society and just to be around, you know, that, that energy and, and that, that like-minded um, cohort, again, in the sense, not of, of sharing my personal beliefs, but just sharing the same kind of drive and the same kind of wants um, in their own way. But, you know, taking that initiative of having done AmeriCorps or planning on going to Peace Corps or having done Peace Corps and now pursuing further education at a higher level, um, you know, it was it was it was very um, it was very motivating to be surrounded by by uh, my cohort, um, just sharing that energy and that that constant buzz and ideas, and it was just yeah, it was awesome for myself um, to to be surrounded by these kind of people. So yeah, it was a uh, it's a great experience for the Stevenson Center. Um, I would definitely recommend it for anybody who is uh, a little like me and, and is more a fan of the field work and less a little bit of the classroom um just because it is it is an applied accelerator program and it's it's um it's really it really helps you see what you read in the textbooks and see it you know in in practice and i just think it, it carries so much more weight that way than just an ordinary program that you know you you can you can learn all the material, but when you see it, you know, come to life, that's that's really the most rewarding experience. And I think that that's my favorite part around about the Stevenson Center. Um, and also, uh, Bloomington is a beautiful place. And so is ISU. It was uh, it was fun to get away from home. Um, but yeah, and so the Stevenson Center allowed me to continue that, you know, through this professional practice experience, um, continue that 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 um real life kind of practice and and experience and and really getting to see what it is like you know in the economic development world and in the community development world and and it really ha has helped you know shape my my kind of plans for the future i frankly i'm still at the same stage i was when i was in exiting undergrad and when i was finishing my americorps term I still don't know what I want to do, but I know that it's definitely going to be something in community and economic development. Um, so yeah, this is an awesome program and I love it and everybody in it.
Thanks.